Back in Xcode again, press Command I to launch a fresh instance of instruments. This time, I'd like you to choose the Allocations instrument, then press Choose. This tells you how many objects you're creating and what happens to them. Go ahead and press Record as our instruments to launch the app. Then, in the simulator, scroll around. I'll scroll and scroll and scroll to the bottom and then up again. Like that. So we've gone right to the bottom more or less and up to the top again. Back in Instruments, I'll press Stop to stop recording. What you'll see down here in the detail view is lots and lots of information being shown. Lots of things like this, malloc and malloc. Malloc means memory allocate. You'll see things like uh, CF basic hash and core UI image data and other things like CF strings and similar. There's lots of stuff in there we just don't care about right now because most of the code we have is UI work. Fortunately, this search box down here, instrument detail, will filter the de detail to show only some kinds of things. I'll go ahead and type UI into there to filter by user interface things, UI kit things. And now it's showing only things that have UI in their name. Uh, in this case, what we're looking for is things like UI image view right here, or UI table view cell, or UI long press gesture recognizer, UI tap recognizer, and more. And over here to the right, it'll tell you how many things are persistent and how many are transient. Persistent things are objects that were created and still exist. They carried on existing while a program was running. Transient objects were created and since destroyed. Now, if you notice, just scrolling around our table like this has made lots and lots of UI table view cells. 162 transient table view cells and 162 table view labels and UI image views and UI long process recognizers and UI tap recognizers and more. This is because each time the app needs to show a cell, it creates it, then creates all the subviews inside it, namely an image view and a label, plus some hidden things we don't usually care about. iOS works around this cost by using the method DQ reusable cell with identifier. Let's have a look at our code back in Xcode. Here is self row at. And you can see we have let cell equals a new UI table view cell, style default, reuse identifier cell. There is no call to DQ reusable cell. The only place cells are being called is right there on line 59. So clearly that's the culprit because it creates a new cell every time the table view asks for one. This kind of work creating lots of cells has been slow since the very first days of iOS development. And Apple has always had a solution. Ask table view to DQ a cell, and if you get nil back, create a cell yourself. This is different from when we're using prototype cells with a storyboard. With storyboards, if you DQ a prototype cell, then iOS automatically handles creating them as needed. If you're creating table view cells in code like we are here, you have two options to fix this intense allocation of views. First, we could rewrite the code here to be this. var cell equals table view dot dq reusable cell with identifier cell. And if cell is equal to nil, if that failed, then say cell is a new UI table view cell with the style dot default and recentifier cell. So it's going to try and DQ a cell first, and only if that fails will it make a new one. But it'll only fail the first few times, after that it will reuse as normal. And this creates a slight annoyance. If you look at the return value for this to a DQ reusable cell, you'll see we actually get back an optional, because it might be nil. In this case, we know for a fact that if we do get nil back, we're going to be creating one immediately afterwards. So this thing, even though in theory it can be nil briefly, won't be nil by the time we have to use it. So you might want to say varcel colon UI table view cell implicitly unwrapped to avoid those compile errors. 
The other solution you could use is to register a class with a table view for the reuse identifier cell. First, I'll undo my code to get back to what we had before. Undo, 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 undo. Almost, there we go. So the same code we had originally. But now, inside view did load, which is here, we're going to register the reuse identifier cell with the table view. We'll say table view dot register UI table view cell dot self for reuse identifier cell, which means when we request a cell, we'll get one back reused automatically. And we'll now never get nil back when dequeuing a cell with the identifier cell. Because of that, when we're dequeuing cells, we can now use the same kind of code we used to use with Interface Builder. We could say, let cell equals table view dot dequeue reusable cell with identifier for index path. The second option with the extra parameter would say cell and our index path. And that extra parameter is what works with the registration of a cell inside view did load. This second solution is substantially newer than the first and can really help cut down the amount of code you need. But it has two drawbacks. With the original solution, we can specify different kinds of cell styles, not just default, but things like dot subtitle, like we used in Project 7. Also, with the first solution, you explicitly know when a cell has just been created, so it's easy to force any one-off work into the if cell is equal to nil block. Regardless of which solution you choose, and you'll use both in your production code, I expect, you should be able to run the allocations instrument again and see far fewer table view cell allocations. Let's try it out now. I'll press Command I. Then press Record. And then in Simulator, I will scroll around. Like that. Lots of scrolling all the way down and all the way to the top again. Then press Stop. And now for UI Table View Cell, you can see there are 19 persistent cells and zero transient cells. With this small change, iOS will just reuse cells as they're needed, which makes your code run faster and operate more efficiently.